calorie deficit. Oh my God, could we possibly have the words calorie deficit thrown in our faces more? <laughs> Probably not. So welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today, we are gonna be talking about calorie deficits, what they are, why you see them everywhere, if they really work, and what I recommend petite women do. So let's get ready to just dive into this. So what is a calorie deficit? A calorie deficit is simply a shortage of calories caused by eating less and burning more through exercise. Now, if you have been struggling to lose weight or lose fat by dieting, eating less and doing more exercise, then you know it's really not as simple as just being in a calorie deficit, right? If you're one of those people who has been on an eternal struggle to lose fat, you've tried all the things, you've dieted, you've done the running and the cardio, then you simply know that the, the calorie deficit doesn't always work. And we're gonna be talking about why it doesn't always work for petite women, why it's failing you, what's really happening when it fails you. And then I'm gonna give you three ways to tweak it and fix it so that you actually can get results as a petite, start losing fat and tone up. People ask me all the time on Instagram, do I really need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight? The answer is yes, you do need to be in a negative calorie balance in order to lose weight. However, when you lose weight, you are not just losing fat. In fact, there's this one study I'm gonna bring up. I'm just gonna pull up this chart so I can look at it. This was a Stanford University research uh, study on active men. They were put in a 40% calorie deficit and they tracked their weight, their lean muscle mass, and their body fat for three weeks. And what they found was that while these men lost an average of 8.4 pounds in 21 days, over half of the weight loss was actually lean muscle mass. Let's talk about what this means. So yes, the scale went down, but it was largely muscle they lost, not fat. And that is very significant because what happens when you lose muscle is that your metabolism decreases. And that's because it is very energy spendy to have muscle. So of course, if you're gonna be in a deficit, your body's gonna try to let go of the stuff that requires the most energy to hold on to, AKA muscle, not fat. So in this study, there was a negative effect on metabolism because they lost so much muscle mass and they found that it dropped as much as 230 calories or metabolism. So it doesn't sound like a lot, right? But over the course of three months, they lost the ability, the capacity to burn an additional five to six pounds of fat at rest. So if they had kept that muscle, they could have burned way more fat doing absolutely nothing. The problem is they lost that muscle when they dieted and they lost that capacity to be able to burn up fat. This is also what's known as metabolic adaptation. A slower metabolism means you burn fewer calories at rest, which means you're more efficient. And that also means that you don't need as many calories anymore to exist. And so you plateau, right? You're not going to lose any more weight because you've effectively lowered your needs, your caloric needs. Your body adjusts to that. And this is where it really sucks for petite women. Petite women, my girls, if you go down this route of deciding to lose weight by doing a steep or even a moderate calorie deficit, and you're already cutting from 1200 calories down to 1000 calories or 1400 calories down to 1000 calories, you are going to lose muscle mass, which is the one thing you need to be able to keep weight off in the long term. And when you lose muscle mass, you're not gonna get the results that you want in terms of looking toned and strong, feeling good. You're going to be still holding fat even as you drop weight. And lastly, you will effectively slow your metabolism down to the point where you now have to eat, or I should say, you can only eat 1,000 calories in a day without gaining weight. So you start putting yourself in that hole, putting yourself in a position where the only way out is to actually gain weight or do a really slow reverse diet to get out of what you just did to your metabolism. So you can see that one of the major, major, major downsides to a calorie deficit for men and women, but this is particularly important for petite women because of how low our calorie threshold already is. You can see that when you lose muscle, it doesn't get you closer to your goal. So that actually brought me already into point number two I had, which was when you do 
get that low in calories, that's petite, and then you hit that plateau, that metabolic adaptation, you are now stuck, like I said, at a thousand calories. I won't repeat myself, but you guys, a lot of you guys have been there before because I've talked with you about it. It's when you've dieted for so long or you've yo-yo dieted that you now only eat a little bit of food in a day, but you still feel like even just looking at food makes you gain weight. And it's because you've slowed down your metabolism. You've maybe lost a little bit of muscle from dieting too much and now you're in a place where your metabolism is lower. If this is you, by the way, it's not permanent. Your metabolism is dynamic. It can adapt, it can speed up again. So don't worry, you didn't permanently do anything here. You can absolutely start increasing your calories slowly and strength train to try to get that muscle back up. And the more lean muscle mass you have, the more calories you'll be able to burn at rest, the more fat you'll be able to burn at rest, the more calories you'll be able to eat in a day without gaining weight. And that is so, so, so key. And the third reason why calorie deficits fail you as petite is when we drop low, when we drop calories low, we do that calorie deficit from an already low threshold, right? Petite women are starting dieting from a lower number of calories because we're smaller, we just tend to eat less, we don't need as many calories to sustain us and keep us alive, right? So like, you know, the men in this study were probably eating 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 calories a day. They can cut off 200 calories and it will not feel different. Like Gary, my fiance, He's 6'4", he eats 6,000 calories a day. All he has to do is cut out a couple cookies here and there, he's fine. There's no repercussions for that in terms of losing muscle mass or you know low energy and mood or hunger or anything because he already has enough calories left over, even in a deficit, to feel good. When we cut calories as petite women, we don't have all of that extra room to cut from. We're cutting from an already smaller reservoir, if you will, of calories because we're smaller and that's okay. But as a result, when we do try to take away and we end up with a thousand calories a day, we are not going to be feeling good. We're going to lose muscle. We're going to have low energy. We're going to have all those things that I talked about. So it doesn't scale down well. Does it work? Yes, you will lose weight. Would you like to lose weight at the expense of your general well-being, your long-term health, your ability to lose that weight and keep it off in the long term though, my guess is no, you would not want that. So that third way that calorie deficits is failing us as petite women is the side effects of dieting. On petite women are more pronounced than they are on women or men that are taller who can afford to eat more calories and therefore when they do a calorie deficit, they still have a lot of calories left over and we don't. Talk about how you can fix this and get this working in your favor. So here are my three tweaks for turning this around. Step number one is to stop focusing on eating less and start focusing on eating better. Now, when you start focusing on eating more whole foods, less processed foods, not only are they more satiating because of the nutrients that are in them, but they're also usually more voluminous, meaning vegetables take up a lot of space in your stomach. The fiber that's in high fiber carbohydrates is gonna keep you fuller longer. Healthy fats are gonna keep you full because of the slowest digesting and protein is also hard to digest and break down. So that's gonna keep you very satiated and full as well. And when you blend all three, protein, fats, and fiber scrubs in one meal, you get that trifecta and you end up really shutting down your cravings and not getting hungry and you can stay full for hours after if you balance your meal properly. So sometimes it's not about how much you're eating, it's about what you're eating. Of course, the laws of thermodynamics still apply. If you eat in a surplus, you will likely gain weight given it's not offset by exercise. However, let's just take a look at what two 1500 calorie diets could look like if one was more wholesome, more uh, whole foods based and one was more processed. Now I'm not telling you to eat 1500 calories, I'm just giving you an example. So on the one hand, if you ate mostly processed foods in a day, you could rack up 1500 calories very quickly. I'm talking like one or two meals and you're done, right? You're not gonna feel full eating a cookie from Subway and like, you know, um, whatever, something from a fast food restaurant or even just, uh, you know, something that is, is, is very processed. If it's a protein bar, if it's, if it's prepackaged, these types of foods are not satiating at all. So yes, you could technically just have that, you know, 
one meal a day, but that would be all you would eat and that would be miserable. You would have the worst day ever. I'm not sure you could even stick to that and I'm not sure why you would, but easily 1500 calories can rack up really fast when it's processed foods. However, if you look at like a 1500 calorie day that I eat, it is full of food. And sometimes I eat more than that. Sometimes I eat around that, it depends. But as an example, just to compare, I have six meals a day and they're all full. I fill my plate. So in the morning, you could be able to have eggs and two slices of toast and uh, cheese and you know a, si a side salad. You could have a soup for lunch. I have a turkey soup with you know cheese and it's, it's so filling. And for my snack, I have a yogurt bowl with granola and berries, high fiber, it's great. And dinner, I'll have a mac and cheese, a protein and vegetable mac and cheese that I made in my Instant Pot, it's fantastic. And then I always have dessert. Lately, I've been having a protein ice cream bowl with chocolate, cacao nibs, and pumpkin seeds. And can you guys see, just imagining that, even just how long it took for me to say it, they're both the same amount of calories, but one of them is going to make you feel good, keep you full, keep you satiated, and give you what you need to successfully, you know, stay within your calorie range, whereas the other one is gonna set you up for failure because it is it is just impossible to eat that low, that first of all, the volume of food is so low, and second of all, the, the lack of nutrients in that food will make you hungry. And this is not to say that you should never eat processed foods. I don't want you guys to think that. I eat probably 20% of processed foods each day and I just call them fun foods. You know, I don't feel bad about them. They are just a part of life and I try to, to fit them in because if I were to restrict them entirely, I would binge eat. So I have chocolate every day. I do have cookies. That's my current weakness. It was creme brulee last year. It's cookies this year. So you don't need to swear off sugar or processed foods, but you just wanna be aware of how much of the food you're eating is actually whole and nutrient dense because that's the food that is going to help you achieve your goals so that you don't actually have to take calories away. Another thing is that when you do start eating more whole foods, you might likely be eating in a deficit, a slight deficit, because the food has less calories in general. Unprocessed food has less calories in general than processed foods typically. There's no hidden fats or hidden sugars because you're making it on your own. And you won't even notice though, because you'll feel so satiated and full by the nutrient dense nature of that food. So that's another reason why some petite women will lose weight when they switch to a whole foods diet. It's not just magic, the law of thermodynamics does apply, but they might be eating slightly less calories, but fe still feeling stuffed and really satiated and full. It's just that they're making better choices instead of just eating less in general. The second way to fix this is to start prioritizing protein in every meal and eat in a protein forward manner in general. Have about 25 to 35 grams of protein per meal. That's so solid. And when you go out to order at restaurants or you make food for yourself, look for the protein, the higher protein recipes. And just if you eat in that way, protein is gonna help you stay satiated, it's gonna help you stay full. And, it, and most importantly, it's going to help you build that lean muscle, which if you guys haven't heard me say it enough, is the key for petite women to stay lean year round without dieting. The third fix here is to start lifting weights and just be patient. The only way to build muscle is to lift weights. Now you can use your body weight as a form of resistance. You're gonna adjust to that within one to two months. After that, you need to start picking up something a little heavier, something that has a little bit more stimulus on the muscles and allow yourself to progressively increase those weights over time so you can continue to build muscle. Lifting weights is awesome for petite women. It's gonna help increase your confidence. It's gonna uh, increase your metabolism. It's gonna help you build that muscle, which is going to all help you increase your metabolism at rest, which helps you burn more fat in your sleep. Third thing here also, and this is within this realm, is to just be patient. With a calorie deficit, you're dropping fat and muscle at the same time and it's all happening really fast and you're ending up in a hole. With a body recomposition and with a slower approach, it's gonna take more time, but you're gonna end up in an amazing place. Here's what you can expect if you follow this route. Six months from now, and I would say body recomp starts at around eight weeks and can take up to a year depending on how much you've been dieting in the past and what your starting body composition is. But in six months, imagine that you are strong in your body, confident, you've dropped fat, your body fat percentage is lower, you feel really good about your food choices, you're sleeping better, you never have sugar cravings, 
you don't feel guilty about food. These are the types of things you can expect once you kind of start leaning into cooking more and lifting and building that muscle so that you're not always worrying about exercising your food off or eating less in general. So those are the three ways that I would recommend fixing it. And there's just a sidebar I wanna make here. It's not just eating less that will put you in a calorie deficit, it's also over-exercising or exercising more that can put you in a calorie deficit without changing the number of calories you're eating. I just wanna side note that this, in my experience coaching hundreds if not thousands of petite women through body recomps, when you use exercise as a form of entering a calorie deficit, it can have really negative connotations and implications on your mindset because it's very easy to get into the idea that you can eat whatever you want and then just go exercise it off. And I've actually gone down this road myself. I'll start, you know, you'll start like running more, doing more cardio because you ate something and you, your mind just gets fixated on that. This is not only completely ineffective, it does not work, but it also sucks mentally. If you've been through this, let me know in the comments. It's so, so horrible. It's, it's, it's hard to get out of too. The reason why it doesn't work is because when you're exercising, you are grossly overestimating the number of calories that you're burning in that workout session, especially as petites. I'm lucky if I burn 200 calories in a 30 minute cardio session, okay? Like that's me busting my butt. It's hard to burn calories when we're this efficient and this small. The second thing, and when you couple these together, it's kind of, it sucks, but the second thing is that you're grossly underestimating the number of calories that are in the food you're eating. So what ends up happening is you're eating food and then exercising it off, thinking that you did exercise it off, when in reality, it would require you to be running all day to really make up for that. So you can see how this logic absolutely leads to horrible places that will not help you. And so that's also why I don't recommend that you enter a calorie deficit by increasing your cardio. There's a lot of other reasons I don't recommend this. It increases your appetite. It's gonna make you hungrier, so you're gonna be hungry anyways. And then of course, running this and cardio is catabolic, so if the only thing you do is run, you're just further encouraging the breakdown of mus muscle tissue, which we wanna preserve. So there's a lot of reasons why just increasing your expenditure it is usually helpful, but you don't want to overdo it. So sometimes maybe just increasing your step count or your um, non-exercise, uh, not your non-structured exercise activity, that can be really useful for kind of getting a leg up on your goals, but going and doing extra cardio classes and just getting your cortisol levels jacked up is not going to help. But it's all of these things as a, a together balanced in a sustainable way that will help you get your goal. By the way, this entire process that I've just outlined to you is what I teach petite women to do. We've helped hundreds of women go through this process and come out the other side. And we are taking a new session of women in February, so in the next, actually this week, to join our uh, February session of the Petite Power Program. If you're interested in applying, you can book a call with me below. It's a free call. We're gonna chat for 25 minutes about your goals, what you'd like to achieve, and if we both feel like it's a good fit, we'll accept you into the program and then we will get you started. We're starting at the end of February. So if you're interested at all in going through this process yourself, but you want someone to help you, you want someone who knows your body type as a petite, and you wanna be surrounded by petite experts in the health space, this is the only program that can do that for you. There's no other programs for petite women. And we would absolutely love to work with you. So you can apply to book a call with me below and I'll get back to you shortly. And other than that, you guys, I would love to hear if this resonates with you. I also wanna know what questions you have about calorie deficits for petite women below and your experiences with this because I'm sure we've all had some experience with this before. Let me know what you think and questions in the comments, I will answer them. And other than that, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you next week.